This is the kit you need for sewing ribbon and elastic onto point shoes. Ribbon, elastic, thread, needle and pins, scissors. I'm just going to back up for a moment to answer some frequently asked questions. And the first one is always about thread. Do I need a special kind of thread? No, you don't. You just need a good quality thread. A cheap unbranded thread, the kind you get online or in travel packs, is not really strong enough. The, the best test is to wrap it around your fingers and pull. And if it comes apart like that, it's not strong enough. On the other side of the coin is this type of thread, which you find in ballet sewing kits. Now this is super strong. You'll never break that. The only problem with it is it's quite thick and you need a thicker needle to thread it. I prefer a thinner needle for the ribbon. I actually love this stuff on the point shoe elastic. A good quality branded thread is fine. And here's the test. I wrap it round my fingers and pull. If that doesn't break, it's strong enough. Thread it double, tie a dressmaker's knot, which is listed in the essential skills if you need it. Okay, needles. The longest, strongest, sharpest needle in your pack is the best for this job. Trying to sew on ribbons with a tiny little needle is miserable. A couple of pins, nothing complicated about that. Now scissors, you'll see me in the video series using my big dressmaking scissors and my little snips. But if you're just going out and buying a pair for this job, you want something about like that. Long enough to effectively cut the ribbon and not so long that they're difficult to use when you're trimming ends. Don't be tempted to use paper scissors. Watch what happens when you try and cut point shoe ribbon with paper scissors. That's a really unsatisfying job. Keep your scissors just for ribbon. Isn't that satisfying? That's all the sewing kit you need. All that remains is a pencil to mark up the ballet shoes and a tea light to seal the ends of the ribbons. Take the ribbon, it will be in one long piece. Fold the whole piece in half and cut. Your length of ribbon is now cut into two long pieces and you're going to decide if you want to leave it as two or cut again into four. I'll just explain the difference. Some people like to sew it in one long piece and it's certainly very secure, but as a dancer, I find that uncomfortable. It's also a little bit more difficult to sew. It is strong and if you want to use it in one piece, there's nothing wrong with that. I like to cut it and have two pieces and sew them deep into the shoe. So that's what I'm gonna to do today. The two pieces are folded and ready to cut. Keep them all the same length. The dancer will adjust the length when she first puts the shoes on. Here are the four pieces ready to go and now it's time to melt the ends to seal them. When they're cut, just seal the end with a flame. See how that melts and it seals that. Don't allow the ribbon to make contact with the flame, it will catch fire, just close enough to melt it. At this point I'll just add a disclaimer, this is a naked flame so take care and make sure there's a responsible adult present or if you're attempting this job with a glass of wine, maybe make sure there's a responsible child present. If you're sewing shoes for a dancer and they can't be with you, ask them to mark the shoes up. It does make life easier. But if they really can't, the generic guideline is to fold the back down and you'll see that where that folds is exactly where those markers are. Take the ribbon and place it where those markers are. And that will go deep into the shoe. I'm going to allow just enough to make a turning. There'll be enough to turn that at the bottom. Bring it around a bit easier to see. And to make life easier, I'm gonna pop a pin in that. 
so we know there's enough to turn it at the bottom. Right, take your ready threaded needle, threaded and knotted. If you'd like more information about the dressmaker's knot or the overstitch that we're about to use, please refer to the Essential Sewing Skills for Dancers guide. And I'm going to make use of this binding here and bring the needle up just underneath that binding so that the knot will hide and hold really well. You've noticed I'm sewing it in dark cotton and that's just to make it easier for you to see what's going on. Clearly you'll be going for pink or cream. Up through there, you can feel the binding underneath is such a nice secure place to get that stitch and it's crucial not to sew through that drawstring. It's got a job to do, don't sew through it. We're well clear of it underneath here. Catch that binding under there and just a little overstitch. If you want more detailed guidance about this overstitch, remember you can find it in the Essential Sewing Skills for Dancers guide. That's really secure now, enough to move the pin. And turn it round, smooth it down with your thumb ready to sew that flat against the canvas. So pick up a layer of canvas and up through the ribbon, through the canvas, up through the ribbon. When you get towards the end, we want to tuck that ribbon underneath to form a hem. You'll find it easier then to turn the shoe inside out. It gives you space to grip. Straight down into the corner. I'm still sewing just into the canvas lining and not into the satin on the other side. So that when you turn it, even though it's in black thread, can't see it at all. Going across the bottom now. Turning again. Now to cast off. Again, make use of that binding rather than the ribbon through the binding and then back through my stitch and again and once more for good luck. That's flat and very secure and snip away. Ribbon in place and when we turn it over just to check no stitches on the other side. Here's the second side and the markers are in place. There goes the ribbon. I'm not using a pin this time. And I'm using normal coloured thread instead of black. Elastics next, and we're aiming for that gold standard, both sides of the ribbon. Much like the ribbon, the elastic will come in one long piece. There's a full metre in there, and we need that chopped into four pieces. We're placing it inside the heel and it's going to want to go at this kind of angle that much for when it comes over here. So when you place it at that angle, it doesn't need to go that deep into the shoe. So we can stop about there. And that will sit very nicely here. 
Now, where you set it is about at midpoint between the back of the heel and where the ribbon ends. Here. This is a judgment thing. You can put the shoe on and place the elastic, but you know, halfway, that's good. Take your ready threaded needle and the same same theory as the, the ribbon, we're going through the binding and then up through the elastic. You can see it hiding underneath there. With this dark thread and the invisible elastic, as we call it, you can really see what's going on here and along that binding thread. See it there? Right, close. I've turned the corner and again bringing the shoe inside out makes it easier to stitch. And that's ready for when it comes across here. At this stage, it really is better to measure this on a dancer's foot. It's so difficult to get this measurement right without the foot because it depends on how high her instep is. I've switched to a Russian class shoe just to share the love. The ribbons are in place and the back of the elastics are in place and I've pinned it. Now, if the pin comes across, I just lay it here and it's quite nice to pin it into place. Turn that edge under so that it won't fray. And again, I'm going to sew in black so that you can see what's going on. As always, under the binding. And let that not sit underneath there, out of the way. Nearly there, just one piece to go. Here's the last piece, pinned into place. Trimmed, because I don't need that much. Turned under. This time I'm going to thread it with the thick ballet thread. A thicker needle is okay for this elastic. Actually, I prefer a thicker needle for this. 